All right, let's welcome our first guest on this new program, the Deputy Leader of the Federal Liberal Party, um, Josh Frydenberg, is also the Treasurer, but many describe this man as the hope of the side, but he is opposed in the seat of the Liberal Party founder, Robert Menzies, the seat of Kuyong, another of the so-called independents, to that in a moment, but I will make this point. If there are people watching this in the seat of Kuyong and think that you're going to be advantaged by voting someone to beat this guy, forget going to the polling station. So, Treasurer, thank you for your time. <laughs> I must ask you this first question because the latest That's poll brilliant. today oh. is 53.47. Your employment record is astonishing. Unemployment for February fell to 4%. Participation rate increased to 66.4%. Employment increased to 13.3 million. Underemployment decreased to 6.5%. Why are the polls where they are? Well, Alan, you've been around politics for a very long time and you know there's only one poll that counts and that's election day. And you only have to remember back to three years ago when a number of the commentators, a number of the newspapers were writing off the coalition's chances. Indeed, one described our hopes of winning about as, as remote as the dwarf planet Pluto. <laughs> well, that never eventuated. We got there over the line. And I sense too right now that many Australians have not uh, reached a final conclusion as to how they will vote on but, uh, election day. And they are very uncertain about Anthony Albanese. But a whole lot of things have come together, haven't they? And you get blamed for them when in many instances it's not your fault. Now, we've got the cost of living and interest rates. Now, last week's inflation rate, mm -hmm. annualised at 5.1%, is the worst result since 2001. And then underlying inflation, which for the benefit of our viewers, takes out the most extreme price movements, is 3.7%, the highest in 2009. More than half of all the categories tracked by the Bureau, like things that count to the family budget, fuel, housing, vegetables, beef, coffee, petrol, lamb, car maintenance, childcare, electricity showed quarterly price increases of more than 3%. Doesn't this mean that the worker is going backwards when the gap between inflation and wage increases continues to widen? Well, as you know, in the budget that we delivered just a few weeks ago, which was reaffirmed in terms of its forecasts by the Independent Secretary of the Treasury and of the Department of Finance, um, we are expecting wages growth to be higher than inflation in the coming years. And the main inflation number that we saw, as you said, 5.1%, were international factors, particularly the higher fuel prices, which were up 35% for the year, which was the single largest increase in fuel prices since Iraq's invasion right. of Kuwait back in 1990. But nonetheless, if you take those out and get this ago, underlying inflation... So, but, Josh, if you get the underlying inflation, mm -hmm. then, you know, the wage price index up to December was 2.3%, underlying inflation 37 The gap is still very significant, isn't it? And the worker feels he's going backwards. What do you say to the worker? Well, the way to get higher wages is a, is a tighter labour market and the unemployment rate today is the equal lowest in 48 years. Female unemployment is its lowest level since 1974. And it's the expectation that the unemployment rate will have a three in front of it for the first time in 50 years later this year. And once you get a tighter labour market like that, you get employers competing for employees and bidding up uh, wages. You've also got broader indicators, Alan, uh, in terms of earnings called AENA, which takes into account bonuses and people moving between jobs, which does show a higher uh, return for, for workers in terms of higher earnings. So mm. we're confident um, that the economy mm. will continue to grow and that we'll see a tighter But, Treasurer, up. there are people watching you tonight who say, I know unemployment's at 4%, uh, migration has virtually mm. stopped, we can't get workers. Now, mm. one way of overcoming the problems we mm. face is higher productivity. How can you get higher productivity when employers can't find workers? Well, there are lots of drivers of higher productivity, including the digital transformation which we're investing in. Um, the skilling up of the workforce, which, again, we're investing in with more apprentices in a trade today than on record. Uh, we're also investing in new infrastructure projects, all of which will drive higher productivity gains. In terms of getting uh, more people into those jobs, because you're absolutely right, Alan, there are 
workforce shortages in in key sectors of the economy, in key roles in the economy. The way to get people into those roles and to fill those gaps is to train more people, and that's what we're investing in. That's what the budget was doing. There's also skilled workers who are now coming back after the borders have reopened, and we've also ensured that people can move more freely across the country to take jobs in different states where those jobs are, whereas previously it was a lot more difficult, a lot more red tape. But see, there's a lot of alarmist talk about interest rates going up uh, tomorrow. Now, mm. surely mm. if the Australian economy can't withstand the cash rate above 0.1% without jobs and the property markets crashing. We must be in more trouble than we're prepared to admit. Don't you agree? Well, the cash rate's at a historic low, and what I've said publicly before, Alan, is just as fiscal policy, which is the responsibility of government, has started to normalise and we brought to an end those emergency payments, so too will monetary policy, which is the the, uh, the decision for the independent board of the Reserve Bank. That will normalise over time, and we've seen that in other, in other countries. Should interest rates go um, up tomorrow, as you the Reserve say, Bank? The cash rate today is... Should the Reserve Bank stick up interest well, rates Well, you know tomorrow? better than to ask... A... <laughs> Alan, you know better than to ask <laughs> a treasurer to speculate <laughs> on what the independent board of the Reserve Bank... <laughs> just testing. Just so testing was fishing this. for a headline, I mean, that's it. Doesn't, doesn't tipping all this money that's been promised by both parties in the election campaign now... Up to date, it's almost both parties, six million. Now, doesn't this add to the inflation problem? I mean, the coalition's promised 2.27 billion, Labor 2.7 billion. Isn't this merely adding to the inflationary pressures? Well, in terms of what you're uh, alluding to with, in terms of the federal government, uh, in that, a lot of that is in terms of relief for the flood victims and additional support which we had allowed for in the budget and now we were putting out more information about it. Uh, what we have done is brought to an end that emergency economic support uh, because the economy is definitely coming back strongly. In fact, we're seeing now a recovery which is far greater and far faster and stronger than any other major advanced economy right, around that, the world. Right, that's true. But, but Josh, you've pumped... You, you, there are promises in this election campaign to date of almost $3 billion and the federal budget pumped billions of dollars into the pockets of consumers who are already enjoying record low interest rates and employment at below 4%. Isn't, I just ask you again, isn't that inflationary? More people with more money chasing the same product up go prices. Well, you can drive up inflation on both the demand side, but also you can see challenges on the supply side. What we're seeing right now is more on the supply side. And what I mean by that, Alan, is because of COVID, for example, uh, people, uh, we saw more goods um, being demanded, but we also saw problems in terms of freight costs and we saw that increase fivefold since the beginning of the pandemic. We didn't see as many people in the factories producing the equipment, so or producing the widgets, if you like. And so, therefore, the supply of goods was constrained. Mm -hmm. That has led to higher costs flowing through to the uh, to, to the supermarket shelves here. We've also seen because of the Ukraine um, developments. Fuel costs increased quite dramatically. Wheat costs increased quite dramatically. Ukraine's a big producer of of uh, of wheat, and obviously Russia's a big producer now, of nonetheless, energy. Nonetheless, all these staples, supplies. things like housing and everything, are going up in double-digit figures. And and I understand mm. that natural food-growing regions uh, have been damaged by the drought, and you're going to get blamed for all this and so mm. on. I just want to come to this business about your electorate. Uh, you have mm -hmm. been, posters of you have been daubed with the most horrific and disgraceful attacks mm. on you and your ethnicity. Uh, why shouldn't this be, I mean, daubed with swastikas, moustaches under your nose in images of Hitler? Why shouldn't this be an election issue? I mean, the fabric of the country is being ripped apart by this sort of behaviour what what are you going, what are you going to do about this? Do you just say, well, look, you know, leave it alone. I'll get on with it. We can't afford that, can we? Well, I think you're absolutely right, Alan, to shine a light on this type of behaviour, and whoever is responsible for it should face um, the the full force of the law. And I've got security teams out there uh, monitoring those signs because they've been repeatedly vandalised. In fact, if you on one side of the road are my signs, 
which have been vandalised on the other side of the road are my opponent's signs, which haven't been touched in many yep. cases. Yep. I do point out that I'm not the only one no. who's been... Glad for you and others, yeah. stickers, a lot of... That's right. Yeah, and Zoe McKenzie yep. and today Karen this Andrews. This is disgraceful stuff. Range. I mean, um, this has got to be Steph elevated. Asher, someone's, yes. got to stop, someone's got to stop this rubbish in its tracks. The fabric of society is being attacked. Look, just, be, just before you go, because, I mean, I, I just should say to my viewers before we do go, this man's posters have been... Daubed with dog feces. I mean, Hitler's moustache painted on his face. Now, just one final thing. I mean, which I believe, if I can be critical of you, I don't think those candidates like you being opposed by these so called independents and they're not independents have made the point often enough. If these people can't say who they would support mm. in a hung parliament, why are they entitled to one mm. single vote? Well, Alan, let's be very clear who these so-called independents are because they're not independent. They're organised as a political party. They're funded as a political party and they're spending millions of dollars in each electorate. They are simply a slogan and a billboard with a very slick social media campaign. They're being supported by the Labor Party and the Greens. You could barely find a Labor Party and a Greens billboard in my electorate. Why? Because they're in bed with these so-called mm. independents. Mm. And they're running on a Labor Party platform. Yeah. And in the case of my my opponent here, the so-called independent, they're a former long-standing member of the Labor, Labor Party, Party. something they sought That's to That's called conceal. dishonesty. That's called dishonesty. And I'm saying to you, in the th three weeks remaining, elevate it. Look, I hope we can talk again. Mm. We've run out of time. But sure. I just want to say to the Kuyong voter, you're kidding, aren't you, if you're going to put this bloke onto the sidelines. We've got to think very seriously about what we're doing with our vote. So, Josh, good to talk to you. Good luck in the weeks ahead. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you, Alan. There he is, the Treasurer of Australia, Deputy Thank Leader you. of the Liberal Party, Josh Frydenberg.